armies of the Imperium. The Imperium's military might is vast beyond imagining. The worlds of the Emperor's realm echo with the crash of marching feet and the clangor of martial industry. His battle fleets ply the void, armored prows piercing the darkness. Vast war engines, zealous throngs of fanatical killers, elite super soldiers, shadowy assassins, ground shaking artillery, and other agents of imperial supremacy fight all across the galaxy, sworn to give their lives in the name of the master of mankind. For 10,000 years, Humanity has fought tooth and nail for its place in the galaxy. In M41, this battle is more desperate than ever before. Yet with typical belligerence, the Imperium meets this time of trial by pushing every single world in the Emperor's realm onto a footing of total war. Every planet contributes everything it has to the fight. Exhaustive food production, tireless munitions production, and rapacious extraction of every last natural resource are just some of the ways that the worlds of the Emperor's realm give their all for their species' survival. Nor do these vital worlds stand undefended. Glowering fortifications rise up over windswept deserts steaming jungles, and teeming cityscapes alike. Menacing void mines and bristling defense platforms orbit every Imperial planet. Armies loyal to the Imperial faith stand firm on every front. Humanity's foes might be closing in on all sides, but they will not find the servants of the Emperor to be easy prey. The most iconic warriors of the Imperium are the Adeptus Astartes, more commonly known as the Space Marines. Genetically engineered post-human super soldiers, they are fearless, ferociously strong, and incredibly skilled. Armed and armored with the best war gear the Imperium can provide, the Space Marines strike suddenly and with overwhelming force to eliminate enemy leaders, shatter the foe's morale, and knock out key military targets. Then they redeploy with such speed and efficiency that the battle is often won before the opponent even realizes that it is under attack. Each chapter of Space Marines has its own home world warrior culture, and strategic specialisms. The most extreme examples of this are the demon-battling Grey Knights and the alien-hunting Death Watch. Both employ prohibited lore and specialized technologies to save the Imperium from disaster time and again. When brute force is required for a protracted campaign, the might of the Astra Militarum is unleashed. Also known as the Imperial Guard, this military body is tithed continuously from all across the Imperium. Its numbers of fighting men and women so immense that even the Departmento Munitorum cannot keep an accurate tally. The Astra Militarum overwhelm their enemies with numbers, armor, and firepower. They deploy regiment upon regiment of infantry, tanks, artillery, and aircraft in blow after bludgeoning blow until no matter the cost, the foe is ground to dust. Where the Astra Militarum employ the Imperial Faith as a means to keep their warriors in the fight, the Battle Sisters of the Adepta Sororitas embody its tenants to the last. 
They fuse devastating close-ranged firepower, armored resilience, and extensive training with zealous conviction. The result is a hard-hitting and fanatical force, whose strength of belief is so great that miracles manifest around them as they purge the Emperor's enemies with cleansing flame. The Emperor's aspect as the Machine God garners equally ferocious, if coldly logical, faith amongst the tech priests of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Their armies are no less zealous in their prosecution of the foe. With relentless maniples of cyborgs guitari and energy-wreathed processions of electro-priests hammering their enemies with arcane power. Terrifying robot warriors, walking tanks, and bizarre war engines let fly with barely understood energy weapons. There is no enemy that the Adeptus Mechanicus will not do battle with in the name of recovering the ancient archaeotech they covet. And in extremis, they will even unleash the god machines of the Titan Legions upon the battlefield. The Night Houses, too, employ mighty bipedal war engines. Their nobles pilot these night suits into battle, each mechanical steed many times the height of a man and capable of bearing the firepower of an entire tank squadron. The Night Houses are driven by codes of chivalry and honor to defend humanity, no matter the cost and their deadly lances lope into the flames of war with thunderous strides. It is not only teeming hosts and towering war engines that fight in the Emperor's name. There are also ultra-elite agents who wield his authority, speak with his voice, and slay as though by his own hand. Foremost among these are the Adeptus Custodes. For ten millennia, these exemplars have stood as the Emperor's bodyguards. They fought first at the Emperor's side during the unification of Terra, and are as far removed from any Imperial soldiery as Space Marines are from Astra Militarum Guardsmen. Through genetic alchemy are the custodes blessed with near immortality, with the bodies of demigods and the minds of savants. They repay this gift by fighting to defend the Emperor and Terra with single-minded determination, wielding ancient and potent weapons to eliminate the most extreme and terrible threats to the throne world, wherever they may appear. Inquisitors fight their shadow wars to protect the Imperium, leading bands of henchmen and requisitioned armies into the battle in the Emperor's name. Lethal agents of the Officio Assassinorum slay demagogues with pinpoint shots from miles away or shapeshift to strike from the midst of their target's most trusted lieutenants. Rogue traders direct their private armies to sweep aside aliens and heretics alike and claim new worlds for the Emperor's domain. Horus's has not been the only rebellion to bedevil the Imperium over its long history, of course. More often than they would wish to admit, these selfsame armies have been unleashed upon seditious imperial factions. Yet no more mercy is shown in battles than against the most abhorrent aliens and demonic heretics. In the war for humanity's survival, there can be no mercy. And any who do not serve the Emperor's will are foes who must be destroyed. 
Adeptus Astartes. There is no combat theater in which the space marines cannot excel, no foe they cannot overcome, and no danger they fear to face. They are the elite shock troops of the Imperium, whose lightning-fast campaigns are conducted with such spectacular brutality that they have come to be known as the Angels of Death. Each space marine is a living weapon of remarkable potency. Infused with the gene seed of their Primarch, psycho-indoctrinated to loyalty, and fearlessness, and trained in every aspect of the sacred Codex Astartes, each battle brother is a lethal tool of martial supremacy. The Adeptus Astartes benefit also from the most devastating war gear the Imperium can furnish them with. Most ubiquitous and well-known of the Space Marine armaments is the vast range of bolt weapons they employ. From pistols and rifles up to massive heavy bolters and other more esoteric weapons, these guns fire self-propelled micro-missiles whose bellicose machine spirits detect when they have punched deep into their targets before detonating with tremendous force. Equally potent is Space Marine Power Armor. Incredibly durable, servo-assisted, and powered from a mounted backpack unit, the various marks of power armor afford their wearer an advanced suite of auto-senses and personal protection, compared to that of a light battle tank. Not only this, but advanced marks such as the MKX armor or the ancient Terminator plane permit battle brothers to adopt highly specialized roles and wield unusual armaments with ease. These are but a few examples of the vast range of specialized and finely crafted arms and armor the Adeptus Astartes have at their disposal. From revving chainswords to lethal plasma incinerators, all are wielded in the Emperor's name. Each Space Marine chapter also benefits from a vast armory, which can be called upon to deploy fleets of battle tanks, armored transports, light reconnaissance vehicles, aerial interceptors, transport gunships, mobile artillery, and combat walkers. All are crafted and crewed to the highest possible standards, and many are ancient and deeply venerated by the warriors who fight alongside them. Most Space Marine chapters boast a full battle fleet of heavily armored spacecraft, capable of transporting their companies around the galaxy. These vessels shatter orbital blockades and utilize rapid deployment methods such as drop pods and teleportation arrays to deliver their warriors directly into the heart of the foe. Speed, precision, and overwhelming force lie at the center of the Space Marine way of war. Though comparatively few in number, Space Marines are ideally suited to the sorts of high-stakes, high-danger missions change the tide of an entire war zone. A strike force of Adeptus Astartes can gut the enemy's command structure. They can knock out orbital defenses ahead of a major offensive, shatter the opposing battle line with an armored thrust, or launch a string of terror raids to break the foe's morale. Sometimes the Space Marines go to war alongside larger Imperial deployments, spearheading the attack of crusading battle groups, then departing for their next war zone, leaving lesser soldiery to clean up. The Adeptus Astartes undertake missions that no other fighting force dare attempt. 
pressing deep into space hulks to purge them of Xenos infestations, and fighting in both hard vacuum and on worlds too polluted, irradiated, or tainted for unaugmented humans to survive. They are able to face abominations that would shatter the sanity of lesser warriors, operate for months behind enemy lines without detection, and hold out for weeks at a time without resupply or support against overwhelming forces. All of these missions and more lie within the Space Marines remit. There are hundreds of different Space Marine chapters, with proud honor rolls and magnificent martial histories to call their own. Yet, all trace their genetic lineage back to one of the first founding chapters, who themselves were formed from the core of each of the Loyalist Space Marine Legions in the wake of the Horus Heresy. The first founding chapters maintain the teachings of their Primarchs, and most closely resemble them in physical appearance, personality, and tactics. They are imperial institutions, with honor rolls stretching back 10,000 years. And though some are bedeviled by secrets and curses, each successive generation of Battle Brothers fights on, unbowed, to defend the Imperium that created them. The Dark Angels are secretive and somber. They hide terrible truths about the Horus Heresy, and have spent 10,000 years engaged in a hunt for atonement and absolution. By comparison, the Red Armored Blood Angels are noble sons of the angel-winged Primarch Sanguinius, and exhibit all the charisma and magnificence of their gene sire. Yet these warriors suffer a curse known as the Flaw, which can undo all their greatest works at a stroke, and see them descend into a berserk blood frenzy from which there is no return. The Ultramarines are held by many to be exemplars of the Codex Astartes. Wherever their blue armored warriors take to the field, they embody their chapter's battle cry of courage and honor. Scarcely less magnificent or prolific are the Imperial Fists. The sons of the Primarch Rogal Dorn, who were charged as Terra's own Praetorians, specializing in both the prosecution and defense of besiegements across the galaxy. If the Imperial Fists have a weakness, it is their stubborn refusal to accept defeat, which has seen them and their successor chapters engage in untenable assaults and doomed last stands time and again. The White Scars are huntsmen from the windswept plains of Chogoris, experts in stalking and encircling their prey before striking with lightning speed and overwhelming force. The Space Wolves of Fenris also exhibit what appears to outsiders to be barbarous and feral edge. Though where the White Scars are often somber and grim, the sons of the Wolf King, Lehman Russ, are rambunctious and wild in their pursuit of glory and adventure. For all this, both chapters are the bane of the Emperor's foes, renowned for hunting their enemies like prey and annihilating them without mercy. From the fiery world of Nocturne, hail the Salamanders, masterful warrior artisans and wielders of hammer and flame, who believe that to endure hardship is to temper yourself upon the anvil of battle. From the barren world of Medusa come the Iron Hands, 
the sons of doomed Ferris Manus, who believe that living flesh is a weakness. These warriors advance themselves with ever more bionic augmentations of steel and iron, and preach that cold and merciless logic is the Imperium's greatest weapon. From the Moon of Deliverance, the strike forces of the Raven Guard take flight. The Gene Sons of Pale and Mysterious Korax. These warriors employ stealth, subtlety, and ambush to annihilate their enemies. Offsetting their small numbers and unstable gene seed by striking with murderous precision. These, then, are the first founding chapters from whom all other space marine chapters descend. Whether it is one of these ancient warrior orders, a diversion successor chapter, or one of the Primaris chapters of the Ultima founding, all are the champions of humanity, and all fight their wars in the Emperor's name. Death Watch the Death Watch are a specialist chapter of Space Marines formed for a single purpose. It is their task to defend the Imperium from alien threats on every front, utilizing whatever technologies and weaponry they must so as to ensure that the Xenos tide never rises so high as to engulf the Emperor's realm. Even amongst the rarefied ranks of the Adeptus Astartes, the Death Watch comprises only the best of the best. Almost every chapter in the Imperium is pledged to tithe a portion of their finest battle brothers to the Death Watch, and senior officers confer to select those of especially notable strength of spirit, mind, and body. It is well that this is so, for the endless vigil of the Death Watch is one of the most grueling duties that any Imperial organization faces. A commission that can only be performed by the very greatest of warriors. The Spaceborn Watch fortresses of the Death Watch are spread thin across the galaxy. Each is a power in its own right ruled over by a watchmaster in his cadre of librarians, chaplains, apothecaries, and dreadnoughts. Each fields flights of deadly Corvus Blackstar gunships, squadrons of tanks, armored phalanxes of dreadnoughts, and at the heart of every Death Watch battle line, the specialist alien hunting space marine squads known as kill teams. Every Death Watch kill team incorporates Space Marines from different chapters. Their armor is painted midnight black, while their shoulder guards display on one side the silver emblem of the Death Watch, and on the other the heraldry of their chapter of origin. These battle brothers often hail from wildly different warrior cultures, with disparate strategic approaches to warfare. Frequent are the clashes of personalities and tactics within newly forged kill teams. Yet the space marines that make up their ranks soon form an alloy of incredible strength. This martial might is enhanced by access to some of the most advanced and specialized war gear in the Imperium. Many strictures against technological innovation are relaxed or outright ignored by the artificers of the Death Watch, whose duty it is to arm and armor the shield that slays with every possible advantage over the alien species they battle. Bolt weapons are loaded with specialist ammunition that discharges tailored neurotoxins, carapace-busting plasma blasts, or ravenous bioacids upon impact. 
Auspex arrays are calibrated to detect enemies capable of exotic forms of camouflage or even shape-shifting. Battle Brothers are armored and subconsciously indoctrinated to face foes as insidious and varied as mind-eating parasites, dimension-shifting assassins, and building-sized bio-titans. No matter the nature of the alien threat that rears its ghastly head, the Death Watch stands ready to assess the danger and strike with clinical precision and killing force. Then redeploy to where they are needed most. In this way does the thin black line stand against wave upon wave of Xenos foes. In this way do the Death Watch fight to preserve the hope of a future for humanity. Grey Knights Wherever demons break through the veil of reality, wherever the powers of the warp manifest in the form of malefic entities or abhorrent possessions, there strike the Grey Knights. Silver-clad psychic templars from the moon of Titan, these selfless warriors risk all to hold back the threat of humanity's eternal damnation. The Grey Knights are the Emperor's Demon Hunters. They are a highly specialized Space Marine chapter whose existence is known only to a privileged few and whose deployment is the ultimate sanction against the powers of the Warp. They form the Chamber Militant of the Ordo Malleus, often responding in force to warnings issued by its Inquisitors and stemming the demonic tide before it can rise up to consume Imperial worlds. The Grey Knights were forged in secret during the time of the Second Founding, when the Space Marine legions of the Great Crusades were broken down into chapters. Based on the Moon of Titan, shielded from detection by vast and sorcerous wards, the Grey Knights have their own fortress monastery whose defenses are all but impenetrable, and whose deep catacombs contain labyrinths of dark secrets and forbidden lore. It is the role of the Grey Knights to use that lore as a weapon. They alone possess the mental and spiritual fortitude to stare full into the face of the warp. They alone are strong enough to wield the weapons of the archenemy and use them to take the fight to the demonic foe. To this end, every single Grey Knight is a powerful psyker who has trained their entire lives, not just to withstand the dangers of the Empyrean, but to counteract them. The Grey Knights channel their powers into projecting a perpetual shield of warding enchantments known as the Aegis. This field repels the creatures of warp space and protects the Battle Brothers' minds and souls from their touch. Moreover, many Grey Knights are able to unleash their psychic might to blast their enemies with searing flame, conjure protective energies around their comrades, or banish demons from existence with no more than a word or blow. They combine these powers with blessed weapons of incredible potency, including nemesis blades and hammers, and psi cannons that channel their wielder's psychic potential to rip through tank holes and metaphysical warp hide as easily as mortal flesh. Just as the Grey Knight's Battle Brothers are a superlative evolution of all that it means to be a space marine, so too does their chapter armory contain some of the greatest war machines in the Imperium. Battle tanks, dreadnought sarcophagi, and heavily armed gunships bear sigils and wards that armor them against the touch of the unclean, and are piloted by veteran warriors and bellicose machine spirits whose martial abilities have no equal. 
Meanwhile, the Grey Knight's fleet of warships bear them swiftly across the galaxy. With warding sigils and ensorcelled engines that ensure they strike precisely when and where they must in order to keep the threat of chaos at bay. Adepta Sororitas The Adepta Sororitas are warriors of the faith. With Bolter and Melta, with Flamer, Howling Chainblade, and Zealous Devotion, they purge their enemies from the field of battle in the name of the Emperor and the Imperial Creed. The Battle Sisters excel in short-ranged firefights, mowing down the foe with endless volleys of firepower, while their soaring hymnals echo over the screams of the dying. There are none so pious, nor so resolutely faithful, as the Sisters of Battle. They are sworn to the Emperor from their earliest days, inducted into the higher arts of battle, and indoctrinated utterly into the Imperial Creed. Their zeal renders them determined and ferocious soldiers, armored against weakness, fear, and ill discipline by their utter conviction. There is no hardship or horror that the Battle Sisters will not willingly endure for their God Emperor. All would gladly martyr themselves to the last provided that, in doing so, they fulfilled their holy mission. In short, the Adepta Sororitas are among the most devoted and highly skilled warriors in the Emperor's realm. The great martial value is magnified by the Battle Sisters' access to a wealth of potent war gear and specialist combat training. They are the only Imperial military organization outside of the Adeptus Astartes to make widespread use of power armor rendering their warriors phenomenally resilient and capable of making war across a wide range of inimical environments. They wield the holy trinity of Godwin, Diaz pattern bolt guns, melta weaponry, and Promethean belching flamers, rendering them punishingly lethal in mid to close range firefights. The Battle Sisters have access to fleets of assault vehicles and armored personnel carriers that are variants of the redoubtable Rhino Chasis. From the fire belching immolator to the bizarre and terrifying Exorcist artillery tank. Specialist squads such as the Retributors, Dominions, and Seraphim employ massed heavy or specialist weaponry to blast their enemies apart, or else soar into battle on the angelic wings of ornate jump packs. The Ecclesiarchy also provides hordes of fanatical and bizarre shock troops to support the Adeptus Sororitas in battle. Arco Flaglians slash their crackling flails in a killing frenzy. Tormented power combat walkers stride through the enemy with roaring blade saws swinging. Sinister death cult assassins venerate the Emperor through murder, while stalwart crusaders raise their towering shields and advance into the foe. The Adepta Sororitas also benefit from courageous war leaders and mighty champions to lead them into battle. These range from firebrand preachers selfless sisters hospitaller and strategically gifted canonesses to such strange and wondrous spectacles as the supernaturally imbued triumph of Saint Catherine and the angelic living Saint Celestine who has fallen and risen again in battles countless times throughout the history of the Imperium. It is these last that speak to the most remarkable aspect of the Adeptus Sororitas as a military force. As they advance into battle and their prayers ring out, 
It seems to friend and foe alike as though the Emperor, in his beneficence, answers them. The wrecked hits miraculously rebound where they should have punched deep or fly wide when they should have struck home. The Battle Sisters' own fire strikes crucial weak spots in their enemy's armor against all odds, while unaugmented blades slice through inches thick armor with supernatural ease. Heretical enemies burst spontaneously aflame, and squads of Battle Sisters strike unscathed through withering bombardments. Even their wounded rise up from seemingly fatal injuries to fight on when they should have perished. To the Adeptus Rortas themselves, such occurrences are simply proof of their own faith and the divine power of the God Emperor. To them, it is the most natural thing in the galaxy that the will of the Master of Mankind should manifest itself in such ways. Their faith is such that it would be unimaginable to a battle sister that reality could be any different. Not so their allies, who are inspired beyond words by such displays, nor their enemies. More than one heretical horde has hurled down its weapons and fled in terror before the sisters of battle and the manifest will of their god emperor. Whether the enemy chooses to fight or to flee, there is no escape for them. Even a single mission of the Adepta Sororitas possesses the numbers, firepower, and unrelenting fury to sweep down upon their foes and annihilate them wholesale with shocking speed. Yet the Battle Sisters typically deploy in greater numbers than this with entire commanderies descending upon enemy worlds aboard vast ecclesiarchical drop craft known as invasion cathedrums. Upon impact with a planet's surface, such towering structures sweep their surroundings with immense macro flamers and pressurized jets of sanctified holy water. Deafening plang song rolls from their laud hailers as, all about them, the tainted lands of the enemy burn and drown. Even as the flames dance higher and rushing rivers of holy water fill the streets, rank upon rank and squadron upon squadron of the Adepta Sororitas debark from their craft to begin the true purgation of their target world. Such an invasion force drives the foe before them like frightened beasts before a forest fire, when dozens of drop cathedrums descend upon wings of flame to infest a planet's surface. Their armies of conquest and reconsecration make the ground shake with the crash of their boots and the thunder of their guns. Against such a gathering of martial might and unwavering zeal, the heretical foe stands little chance of survival. Each of the martial orders of the Adeptus Sororitas have perfected their own particular way of war. The Order of Our Martyred Lady, for example, place little value upon their own lives and will battle on no matter the odds or danger until nothing stands before them but ruin. By comparison, the Order of the Valorous Heart pledged such value in Stoicism and Endurance that they can shrug off even the most grievous wounds. Their seemingly supernatural capacity for survival has seen many battles carried through sheer sanctified suffering. The Order of the Bloody Rose channeled their fervor into fierce aggression driving unstoppable assaults deep into the heart of their enemy's battle line, while the Order of the Argent Shroud levels such devastating hails of fire against the enemy that nothing can stand before the muzzles of their guns and live. Many more martial orders are scattered across the Emperor's realm, each as lethal and specialized force for holy warfare against his many foes. Adeptus Custodes 
The Adeptus Custodes were the first and greatest of the super soldiers engineered by the Emperor. Each is a warrior of superlative might and superhuman resilience, a strategist and tactician to rival the greatest generals, and so much more besides. They are nigh immortal exemplars of legend, who stop at nothing to defend the Emperor and his throne world. In a galaxy of uncounted souls, the Adeptus Custodes are few indeed. Their numbers never exceed 10,000 warriors at any given time, and often stand at substantially less. Yet a single custodian guard is the equal of entire regiments of any other soldier. The secrets of genetic alchemy behind their creation are amongst the most closely guarded in the Imperium. Every cell in a custodian guard's body sings with incredible vitality and power, lending them the speed, resilience, strength, intellect, and functional immortality of a virtual god of war. When girded with weapons and armor of precious armorite and assembled into mighty shield companies, there is no quest the Adeptus Custodes cannot complete, and no foe they cannot lay low. During the times of the Great Crusade and the subsequent Horus Heresy, these warriors were known as the Legio Custodes, and their sworn duty was to serve as the Emperor's companions and protect him at all costs. It was for this purpose that they were fashioned, but when Horus mortally wounded the Emperor, the Legio Custodes failed in their duty. In the Heresy's wake, the Emperor's Guardian became the Adeptus Custodes and spent many thousands of years watching over the Imperial Palace while swathed in mourning black. The Adeptus Custodes still serve as the guardians of the Emperor's Palace. However, as the passing of the years have dulled the sting of their great failure, the Adeptus Custodes have recognized that the most effective way to safeguard Terra is to take a proactive hand in the ongoing battle against mankind's innumerable foes. To this end, many of their shield hosts now strike out into Imperial space, guided by psychic divination and the intelligence gathered by the shadowy agents known as the Eyes of the Emperor. The Adeptus Custodes descend without warning. Their battles see them strike down demagogues and warlords who might otherwise raise invasion forces against Holy Terra. They capture ancient and eldritch artifacts whose very existence is a danger to the throne, spiriting them back to Terra to be locked deep in the black cells beneath the palace. They safeguard Imperial champions to be until they can fulfill their vital potential make terrifying examples of those who would threaten the sanctity of the throne world, and root out hidden perils so diabolical that alone even the Inquisition or Officio Assassinorum are not equal to the tasks of their destruction. In this way, the Adeptus Custodi serve as the ultimate arbiters of the Emperor's will, and his most assiduous and effective protectors. In battle, their shield hosts are utterly unstoppable. Squads of Aramite armored warriors wade into the enemy, bolts thundering from their guns of their guardian spears, swords and axes, while their gilded storm shields deflect shots and blades as the custodians fight. Each carves his own path through the foe in order to add to his own ever-growing honor name inscribed on the inner plates of his armor. The shield host deploys military technologies from the Golden Age of the Imperium, including ancient land raider battle tanks, Contemptor dreadnoughts, and Dawn Eagle jet bikes, blasting bloody wounds in the opponent's battle lines. 
courageous Alaris custodians, clad in magnificent suits of Terminator plate, teleport directly into the midst of the opposition, before breaking apart like lions on the hunt and tearing the heart from the foe's army. Everywhere the Adeptus Custodes strike, enemies fall with horrifying ease, while the foe's own efforts to lay them low come to naught. Such is the fate of all those who would set themselves against the ultimate power of the Golden Throne. Theirs is a swift and bloody death, delivered by merciless giants. A warning to any others who might consider making the same fatal mistake. Astra Militarum The Astra Militarum are a blunt instrument of violence wrought on a galactic scale. They serve both as flesh and bone shield for the Emperor's realm, and as an unstoppable sledgehammer with which to crush its foes. There is precious little subtlety to their way of war, just the raw application of force. Yet they have served the Imperium well for 10,000 years. To be a soldier of the Astra Militarum is to be one more expendable statistic among countless trillions. It is to be swept away from all you know and consigned to often short and a brutal life of battle, on worlds you have never seen against foes from your worst nightmares. It is to face monstrous enemies while armed with little more than rudimentary training, mass-produced war gear, and the tenuous shield of your faith to preserve you. It is to know hardship, horror, and desperation. It is to experience all of these awful things and yet to fight on regardless. Such is the courage of the Astra Militarum and it is not to be underestimated. In a galaxy of terrors, those who would stand firm and fight for their species are champions all. The forces of the Imperial Guard may not benefit from elite super soldiers or techno supernatural weaponry, but what they have instead is immense firepower and sheer crushing weight of numbers. Astra Militarum armies are characterized by teeming regiments of ground-pounding infantry, mechanized assault spearheads, rumbling armor columns, tortured battle psychers, companies of abhuman troopers, sprawling batteries of mobile artillery, sky-darkening squadrons of combat aircraft, and super-heavy war engines the size of mobile fortresses. Wave upon wave of these forces deploy, their officers barking orders through booming vox horns as their regimental priests bellow fire and brimstone sermons, inspiring hardened veterans and green guild conscripts alike. When the grand armies of the Astra Militarum open fire, it is apocalyptic. Laz guns in their thousands fill the air with searing fury and crew-served heaven weapons spit streams of bolts, tank-busting salvos of missiles and whistling mortar rounds. Plasma blasts and thermal detonations gouge craters in the opposition's lines, while rockets and shells the size of tanks scream down on their foe, their explosions hurling spumes of bedrock and broken bodies high into the air. Relentless and merciless, the bombardment annihilates even the most resilient of rivals. Enemy assaults are blunted by counter-striking armored spearheads, or overwhelmed by the expedient of hurling Imperial Guardsmen into the meat grinder. It is a horrific way to make war, an impersonal slaughter that explains why most Astra Militarum soldiers do not expect to live out their first 15 hours in combat. Yet, it has won countless wars for the Imperium over the millennia. 
And if humanity has one strength above all others, it is a near limitless pool of fresh recruits to feed to its rapacious war machine. Not all battles fought by the Imperial Guard are such cataclysmic affairs. The history of the Imperium is littered with tales of small bands of soldiers staging noble last stands, of commando teams slipping behind enemy lines to assassinate heretical war leaders, and of armored convoys fighting their way through hostile wastelands to deliver vital messages. Air wings engage in pinpoint strikes against the foe's command bunkers or fight their way through hostile skies to knock out bridges in generator rooms. Under-supported and under-supplied platoons of Astro Militarum infantry fight their way through crumbling tunnel networks and bombed out ruins in the hunt for Xenos predators. Almost every world in the Imperium is expected to provide a regular tithe of new recruits for the Astra Militarum. As soldiers are drafted from wildly diverse planetary environments, each group possesses their own cultures, local dialects, styles of dress, and specialisms of warfare. Some of these companies have become famous, or else infamous, throughout the Imperium for deeds either noble or nefarious. The Catacon jungle fighters, for example, are well known for their belligerent survivability and expertise at fighting on overgrown death worlds. The soldiers of Mordian are renowned for their crisp firing drills. Those of Armageddon for their armored infantry while the men and women of destroyed Cadia are widely regarded as the most courageous and determined warriors in the Astra Militarum. The number of elite regiments and organizations augment Astra Militarum armies in the field. The recruits for several of these come from the Scola Progenium. This organization extends across the Imperium and its heavily fortified scholums take in the orphaned sons and daughters of slain Imperial officers. This is no act of altruism, however. From the moment they become wards of the Skolo Progenium, these youths are plunged into grueling training regimen. They are utterly indoctrinated into the Imperial faith and trained in the arts of war by drill abbots who will gladly maim even kill their charges rather than see them taint the Imperium with any weakness. While female recruits are most likely to join the militant orders of the Adeptus Sororitas, the majority of the male Scala graduates are funneled into the Militarum Tempestuus. Highly trained, rigorously conditioned, and fanatically loyal, these so-called stormtroopers are the finest unaugmented human soldiery in the Imperium. Their rapid drop assaults have won victories beyond number. The most rigorous and merciless disciplinarians, meanwhile, are instead drafted to the Commissariat. Clad in black coats and peak caps, these distinctive morale officers prowl the lines of the Astra Militarum watching for any signs of cowardice or weakness. They do not hesitate to make examples of any found wanting, usually with a swift bolt round to the skull. Adeptus Mechanicus The Adeptus Mechanicus wields strange and arcane technological weapons of phenomenal power. They are as aggressive and unrelenting a foe as they are terrifying, for they prize knowledge above all things, and without a second thought they will shed oceans of blood, both the enemies and their own, in their endless crusade for its acquisition. Such is the will of the Omnissiah, and his priests will stop at nothing to see that will done. An Adeptus Mechanicus army in the field resembles a bizarre and grotesque religious precision. Servitors trudge and cyber cherubim soar, 
bearing censers that burn with sacred oils and petrochemical incense. Rank upon rank of cyborgs Katari march tirelessly into the teeth of rival guns, or ride to fight aboard Scorpius dune riders, raising Benharic hymns to the glory of the Omnissiah as their radium carbines and galvanic rifles howl and crack. Lightning-wreathed electro-priests scream with the rapturous energies of the motive force as they hurl themselves into battle. The blows from their glowing weapons dragging the bioelectricity from their victims or amplifying and redirecting it with explosive results. Elite cyborg assassins stalk the shadows, their vicious blades and mechanical talons slicing through the opposition's armor and their augmentic systems bombarding their victims with horrific neurostatic chaff. All of this leaves even the mightiest of warriors helpless before them. Behind these mass augmentic soldiers come maniples of battle robots ancient cybernetic war constructs driven by clattering difference engines. These walking relics inspire wild fervor in the Omnissiah's faithful, for they are embodiments of all that the Martian priesthood holds sacred. In the foe they spark only terror as they stride across the battlefield, unleashing devastating salvos of firepower before bludgeoning survivors into bloody paste with their massive, servo-driven fists. Insectoid walking tanks stalk into the flames of war, unleashing ravenous blasts of energy and hissing clouds of micro-missiles as they advance. Long-legged cavalry walkers lope around the enemy's flanks with bizarre amalgamations of ancient brass-bound technology and grotesque servitor surgery serving as mounts for armored Skatari curiosers. Heavy tread units crush rubble and bone alike as Cataphron servitors rumble up in support, their eye lenses scanning the foe as their cogitor brains assemble targeting solutions, then let fly with devastating energy weapons. All the while, the tech magi themselves lurk amidst the massed ranks of their followers, sending out directional imperatives or unleashing weaponry of stupendous power upon the foe. More priests oversee each battle from orbiting macro barges. Their data tethers allow them to puppet the faithful of the Omnissiah like marionettes upon digital strings. Most terrifying of all are the vast war engines unleashed by the Adeptus Mechanicus upon their luckless enemies. Towering Mechanicus-aligned knights lope onto the battlefield, their noble pilots singing data hymnals to the Omnissiah even as they unleash salvos of devastating fire into the opposition's ranks. More formidable still are the block sized Ordinatus engines. While the greatest assets of the Adeptus Mechanicus are the god machines of the Titan Legions. Should the tread of those bipedal land battleships shake a planet's surface and their shadows stretch dark across its lands, then surely the doom of the Omnissiah's foes is close at hand. Though the Adeptus Mechanicus technically owe fealty to the wider Imperium, in practice their macroclades usually march out only when it serves the tech priests' own agendas. These are as labyrinthian as they are incomprehensible to any knot of the Omnissiah's faith. At their heart, though, they are nearly always acquisitive at the expense of all else. The home worlds of the Adeptus Mechanicus are known as Forge Worlds. Mars, the greatest and oldest amongst them, and each a manufacturing super complex of unimaginable capacity and power. The industry of the Adeptus Mechanicus always demands more raw materials, and it is not uncommon for the Skatari to march out in search of fresh sources of fuel ores, and the like to be plundered. 
Even raw materials are eclipsed in importance for the Adeptus Mechanicus when placed against raw information. The devotees of the Omnissiah believed that all lore, be it biological, technological, chemical, or whatever else, is the rightful possession of the machine god and his servants. It is not uncommon for Forge Worlds to launch vast interstellar crusades in order to recover some lost repository of scientific knowledge or weapons technology, nor for them to abandon the needs of the wider Imperium should such a prize present itself. Indeed, the divergent agendas of the Adeptus Mechanicus have set their armies against those of the wider Imperium on numerous occasions across the millennia, and even pitted one Forge world against another. If the Martian priesthood were not so vital to the continued operation of the Emperor's realm, it is possible that they would have been plunged into open war with Terra long ago, and the fate of humanity sealed one way or the other. As it is, however, the Imperium needs the disciples of the Machine God to survive, and vice versa. So the uneasy alliance continues. Over the millennia, different Forge worlds have become especially renowned for their philosophies or ways of war. These are often colored by the technologies they specialize in manufacturing or the foes they have most commonly faced. The tech priests of Ryza, for example, have spent so long defending their world from orc invasion that they have become experts in battling the brutish Xenos. The devotees of Forge World Metallica loathe all biological life forms and seek their eventual eradication, while the Forge World of Lucius boasts such advanced technologies that they can teleport super heavy war engines directly into battle. Questor Imperialis Imperial knights tower over the battlefield like ironclad idols of war each piloted by a warrior of prodigious skill and courage. They carry the firepower to annihilate entire regiments of the foe in a single salvo, or else wield industrial scale close combat weaponry that can tear down a fortress gate or flip a battle tank with a single blow. The ground shakes as the Imperial Knights march into battle. The pennants and honor banners affixed to their armor flapping in the hot winds of war. Massive plasma reactors thrum with energy, driving the pistons, servos, and gears that send the knight suits pounding forward with frightening speed. At the heart of each towering war engine is a noble pilot, sitting in their throne mechanicum and controlling their mighty steed through a mixture of runic controls, haptic feedback, and neural uplinks. These nobles fight with sublime skill. Though huge and ponderous, their knight suits act as extensions of their own bodies. This profound connection allows lances of imperial knights to fight less like clumsy walking battle tanks and more like armored giants magnifying the skill, strength, and daring of their pilots a hundredfold. It is well that this is so, for the Imperial Knights enter battle vastly outnumbered by the Emperor's foes, where their enemy may send hundreds, even thousands of warriors into the field. An army of knights may number but a handful of nobles. It speaks volumes for the armored fortitude of the knight's suits, and the superlative martial skill of their pilots, that such numbers are sufficient to the task. Even the lightest classes of Imperial Knight boast inches thick armor of adamantine and plasteel, which can absorb the fury of artillery shells and searing energy blasts without faltering. Moreover, every knight benefits from the protection of an iron shield. These miracles of Dark Age technology project arcing energy fields that can destroy or deflect incoming ordnance. 
Nobles train long and hard to master the use of these shields, tilting and angling them with the speed of thought to intercept the opposition's fire. When the knights return fire, then how humanity's rivals suffer. Rapid-fire battle cannons pelt salvos of explosive shells into their lines, hurling showers of rubble and bodies high into the air. Avenger Gatling cannons scream as they pour foot-long bullets into the enemy in a steely, slaughterous storm. Thermal spears spit ravening blasts of superheated energy. Volcano lances roar as they blast the foe with enough power to kill a titan and storm spear rockets rain down upon their opponent's infantry, reducing their worlds to fire and death. A single knight unleashing its payload can rip a gaping hole in the opposition's battle lines. An entire lance of knights letting fly in concert can shatter them entirely. Nor are knights restricted to dueling their enemies from afar. As befits warriors driven by a subconsciously conditioned code of chivalry and honor, many nobles seek to close with the foe and best them in hand-to-hand -hand combat. To this end, many knights wield weapons such as the Reaper Chainsword, or a powered, saw-toothed cutting blade that can carve a dreadnought in two and, in a single swipe, reduce a squad of warriors to a blizzard of gore and gristle. Others are armed with Thunderstrike gauntlets, massive energized fists that can crush, bludgeon, or even hurl rival soldiers and war machines alike with contemptuous ease. There are numerous classes of knight employed by the Imperium, each of which lends themselves to broad strategic roles, such as scouting or fire support. These are further broken down into multiple patterns of knight each with their own designation and iconic weapon configuration. Armager class knights are light and fast, serving as skirmishers and flanking units for knightly lances. The Helvaren pattern employs its auto cannons against enemy infantry and light armor, while the Warglaive races ahead to engage the opposition at close quarters. Dominus class knights are hulking armored beasts that require twin reactors simply to move and fire. The Castellan pattern serves as a movable bastion, laying down withering fire to decimate the foe, while the Valiant plows ahead as a heavy line breaker, blasting and trampling all in its path. It is the Questorus class that sees greatest service in most knightly houses. Midweight, swift, and versatile, this chasis supports many patterns. From the close-ranged knights errant and gallant, to the potently equipped knight crusader, and the strategically flexible knight paladin, knight warden, and knight preceptor. Imperial Agents The dangers facing humanity in this benighted age are manifold, and the battlefields across which they must be faced are myriad. The raw might of a Space Marine Strike Force, or Astra Militarum Tank Company, can crush an army of foes in open battle. Yet for all their military strength, Insidious threats and subtle theaters of conflict may render them ineffectual. Fortunately for the Imperium, the Emperor wields other blades for when such artful knife work is required. In ornate ballrooms and hushed council chambers of high city spires, chaos worshippers whisper lies from behind smiling masks of piety. In remote laboratories, misguided scholars and deranged savants fashion nightmares that will plague worlds. Deviant cults meet in candlelit tombs or slip through crowded city streets. Driven by a desperation or ambition to worship diabolical masters. 
even as the guns thunder on every front and martyrs beyond count give their lives to protect the bastion of the Imperium. So the foolish, the evil, and the insane strive to wear away its foundations from within. It falls to the disparate Imperial agents to counter such threats. Where powerful figures spread sedition and heresy amongst the upper echelons, so the political news of Sister Dialogus may expose their heresy. An Inquisitor's blade may find the malcontent's neck, or most terrifying of all, a dead-eyed killer sent by the Officio Assassinorum may make a bloody example of them for all to fear. Where rioting mobs abandon their manufactorum lines at the urging of heretic preachers, they risk starving the imperial guns of shells and battle tanks of fuel. Such agitators soon find themselves met by the shotgun muzzles, crackling power mauls, and ferocious cyber mastiffs of the Adeptus Arbides. These enforcers toil tirelessly to eliminate illegal hive gangs, root out mutant enclaves, bust open xenotech smuggling rings, and enforce imperial law. Where misguided or rebellious citizens disseminate anti-imperial propaganda, infocytes, and data predators close the net upon them. Where cowards push for rebellion amongst the ranks of the Astra Militarium, the Commissariat execute the ringleaders and restore steel to the soldiers' spines. So ponderous and immense is the bureaucracy of the Emperor's realm that such agents are crucial to preventing less visible dangers from wreaking havoc. Sector command personnel and planetary governors are only just able to handle the task of responding to the most pressing of endless overt military threats to the Imperium. So must Imperial agents labor in the gaps between, their efforts often saving entire worlds or systems. It is impossible to draw a distinct line defining who is and is not an Imperial agent. For some, it requires only official dispensation, while considerations such as merit or motivation matter little. For others, it is a simple case of being in the right place at the right time, vigilant against the danger of corruption and possessed of a will to burn it out. In such cases, the lowliest hive ganger or mendicant might serve as an imperial agent, striking the blow that fells a cult demagogue, prevents the spread of a Xenos plague, or destroys a trove of forbidden archaeotech before its evil can be unleashed. Many believe themselves righteous, however. In such a dark age, the shadows of ignorance and fear are deep indeed. Though they all serve the same master, Imperial agents often find themselves operating at cross-purposes, or outside the bounds of the law. In such cases, conflict is tragic but inevitable. Accusations of heresy fly. Followers of the Dark Gods or the unwittingly duped sow confusion through the ranks of the faithful. Arrogance, zealotry, or a lust for power leads loyal and righteous warriors to fall upon one another. So do the shadow wars of the Imperium rage on, deadly dramas waged in secret for the soul of the Emperor's realm.